Or um, also that you're yeah, pretty you, much. You can, what do you do in your like? What do you do today? What are you going to do tomorrow? You put it well, this morning I didn't get a chance to print it because I woke up at four. Uh -huh. I wrote my poem. I typed it. I uh, uh, put it on my uh, blog. <laughs> but, but, and I post I, and so I was posted and and then I left. So it was all in the dark. It's a little different. It's not a gray white sky. I think it was gray blackness against a fog, against an invisible, invisible ridge, and uh, I think there's some, I forget what it, I didn't have time to print it, so you didn't hear it. So when you're traveling, the time that you're going to write is, would be... It's always a crisis yeah. now, because, I mean, you're going to hear this drone of uh, the same stuff going on, so tomorrow I'm going to have, I'm staying in the Ramada Inn on, uh, um, yeah. what street was it, Mike? Oh, no. <laughs> cool. Something that way. <laughs> so I'm going to have to. So I remember when I was here in April, stayed at Tim and Julie's house. I was, uh, got up and, you know, I went out on the front porch. And, you know, what I found when I travel, there's not the channel, but uh, there's always the sky, and there's trees, and there's buildings. When I go to New York, I love, you know, my daughter lives in New York, and it's great to go there because I look out. I see, I see the same things in a way. There are these things that I see, and I put them in my poems, and they, to me, they correlate with what I see at home. And uh, so, you know, and, and so some of the details change. And of course, in these middle sections where it comes out of reading, I have, I do these, re you know, I sort of read in these books, and I make notes. So, but you probably heard that starting in one five, when I got into this new work, I began to put things in that were observations from actual real life. Like the lights on the tree or the boy, that's my child. And mm -hmm. It's actually really fun for me to be doing that, to get out of these books a little bit. So I like, I, lo I loved hearing, reading this work to me was very intense tonight because as Tim and I were talking a little bit this afternoon, when you come to the end of a thousand page project, it gets really intense because you know you're coming to the end. And I find that at the end, it, it finally I finally figured out just what I'm doing. And so, you know, it's, it's like cruising on this sort of plane, of, you know, in the zone. And, uh, but I also had this crisis for a month or anxiety. What's gonna, what am I going to do? I, don't, I can't stop, but I don't know what to do exactly. So it sort of emerged in the last few days of, and of you know, before 1-4. I started to take some notes about some things, and I just put them in there. So... It was exciting to hear, to me, it was really exciting to hear some of the new work. I, you know, it's different from you, you know, really, but... But when I travel, yeah, it, it shifts. The details shift, but... So that's, you know, it's sort of a... Can you... Yeah, can you can, no, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, is there... Can you say anything about it? I don't know if there's any uh, sense of this a relation between your, your work as a writer and what you're just talking about and and what you've done with, with having to be. I mean, it's sort of a kind of maximalist, minimalist uh, kind of contrast a little bit because it's been, I think you've done one book a year, uh, maybe, or not even, obviously. Um, it, you started in, like, what was it, 86? 86 to do this. And, um, I, don't, I don't know, I just find that an interesting sort of dynamic. It's been, uh, yeah, it's, um it hasn't, there hasn't been a schedule of one a year. I think when I started, I was publishing more books. Sometimes there was a couple a year. Yeah. And, uh, um, I mean, I can go into that story about Avenue B, but the, the, um, the, to me, the more interesting correlation in some way that I'm trying to f think about is the sum, is uh, figure out is the correlation between, uh, like, the work and Reading the Unseen, the, the idea of offstage act. This is the book that Counterpath published about um, offstage action in Hamlet, which, you know, a series of essays I wrote over 15 years, just one at a time. Then I realized, oh, there's just like this topic here. What things that happen uh, in the play that only take place in words, like um, the death of Ophelia in the stream is reported in Gertrude's speech, the ghost reports his murder in the orchard. Hamlet tells about his voyage to England in letters and in speech. All these kinds of things. So, in some way, you know, the, um, I'm getting off your question, but not for long. Um, 
you know, the things that I, you know, these poems are looking at things which are not in the poems, they're only in the language. You know, so the world is coming, you know, the, the reality of events and action are being transcribed in words. I just finished an essay that uh, they, I was asked to write for some publication you might know of. I didn't know of it. It's called American Poet. And it came out from the Academy of American Poet, Poets, Poetry, I guess. And she wrote me and asked if I write about the serial poem and my work. I thought, you sure, I'd like to. So I wrote about, and it's called Words as Things, and then a parenthesis, action events. But, you know, these, so I've been sort of thinking about my work and the way in which uh, uh, the, 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 in, uh, the words in the poems are sort of pointing to these things which are taking place elsewhere off stage and so on. But as far as Avenue B goes, it was, um, if you wanted, what was your question then, Michael? Because you were you were asking about writing, I think. Well, I, I what was your curious. question? Well, Michael yeah. is my uh, friend from Bolinas. We we came on the plane together. And he has a uh, he's a painter and has a opening sh uh, in, uh, of his show in the Fort Collins Museum tomorrow. So anyway, well, I, I had a question. You know, the the beginning and the end of the poem is very specific and chosen. And, yeah. And the center of the poem. I mean, this is maybe my ignorance about. Temporary poetry, but is a found object, and yet there's something you know you've chosen what to find oh, yeah. the stuff. And how do you do that? Can you talk about that, or how do you make those choices? Because while it's random and it's kind of very well thought out, I mean, can you talk about that at all? I mean, is that I mean, is there a certain framework or a certain Type of thing that you read or that you're looking no, for? I have, a, I have specific things that I have. There are like six or seven uh, books that I look at and I find materials, and I find words in them, and I you know, put them into notebooks. And I, well, there's something almost, there's a technical quality to a lot of it also, and I'm curious about it. I also I uh, think question. about these center sections when they're involved with reading, which they have been. As also a connection in a way to the uh, to my life as a um, person in the world living in Bolinas, you know, mm -hmm. looking out at this well, I bridge and sky and all that. Sure. And the last two lines are always things that I see when I'm surfing. You know, right. I go out in the water every right. day. So that's the channel, the gulls, the horizon, the point. I, I go out, you, as you know, obsessively yeah, sure. into the water and one day and the next, and I write things down, the next day those things show right. up in the poem. So does this. Locate the, being located in this place, Molinas, California, an hour north of San Francisco. Well, how do you locate yourself in the center, you know, in the found? Well, the center pieces are like readings that are related to, uh, they, they are, they're like essays about, it's, it's like a, a critical, I mean, they're, they are thinking about what this whole endeavor is about and thinking about the relation between language and thing, mm -hmm. the word and the thing, and the spirit the space and the spatiality. These poems are architectural. I was right. talking yeah. about architecture. That these poems are shaping um, events and codifying of them uh, and giving a kind of structure to uh, you know this organic world that we live in. And also uh, they're a shaping of time. You know, there's some sort of ticking of a clock that is going by in a kind of way that you know is um, uh, attempting to. Or trying to sort of uh, enact these things or re realize these things in the language that's taking place. So, and to think about it, you know, the middle parts are sort of, they're abstract. They're like right. thought, thinking about things that are also physical. Okay. 